Hello friends, this is Dr. Irfan Kamruddin Andani. Today, what we are going to discuss is very important for general practitioners, orthodontists, operative dentists, oral surgeons and many of the specialties of dentistry because many of our patients come to us with the complaint of excessive visibility of gums while they are smiling. And we call it gummy smiles. But there is not a single reason for excessive visibility of gums. And therefore, there is not a single treatment of this problem. Because you cannot give Tylenol for every kind of pain, right? So, today we will discuss how to examine, what things you should keep in your mind while you are examining the patient with gummy smile, and about the treatment we will discuss in the second part of this series. So let's begin. First of all, always look for interlabial gap, the gap between upper and lower lip while the patient is at rest position. The normal value of interlabial gap is 1 to 4 millimeters. If the patient has excessive interlabial gap more than 4 millimeters, we call it incompetent lips. Second thing that you should not miss is the visibility of upper incisor while the patient is at rest. Now remember one thing that if patient has competent lips that does not mean that the patient has zero visibility of incisors while he is at rest. So don't get confused just tap the chin of patient and he will open his mouth a bit. This is not forcefully opening of mouth but just the relaxation of lips. Even if you cannot get any estimate about the visibility of incisors, one more thing that you can do is just talk with your patient. You will get a very good idea that how much incisors are visible when he is at rest and when he is talking. So you have to measure this distance between stomion or upper lip and the incisor ledge. Like in this patient, you can see that the visibility of incisor is more than normal. What is the normal value? 2 to 4 millimeter upper incisors should be visible. You should never miss the length of upper lip. It is the distance between subnasal and stomion. Now the normal value has a big range from 19 to 24 millimeters. In females we have lesser values and in males we have bigger value. But remember that this varies with facial heights. If a patient has a very long face, definitely he will be having longer upper lip. But that does not mean that he will be having gummy smile. Maybe the longer lip has covered the upper incisor and gums to that much extent that he does not have any gummy smile. So better is to compare this upper lip with the length of the commissures. For that, just draw imaginary horizontal line at the level of subnasal or nasolabial junction and draw commissure lines. More or less, the length of the upper lip is equal to the length of the commissures bilaterally. So in this way, you can rule out that gummy smile is due to the short upper lip of patient or not. Next thing, you will not miss the exposure of gums on smiling. You must measure that. And the normal value of visibility of gums when patient is smiling is 0 to 2 millimeters. In males, the visibility of gums is lesser as compared to the females. But if even female has more than 2 millimeter visibility of the gums, she will definitely complain about her gummy smile. One more thing that you should not miss is the elevation of upper lip when your patient is smiling. The normal elevation or mobility of upper lip on smiling is 6 to 8 millimeters. But sometimes the lip is hypermobile. And when patient is smiling, the lip elevates more than normal. So we call it hypermobility of upper lip. And that is the cause of gummy smile in these kind of patients. So how would you measure and check that how much lip is elevating? For that, you will have to measure the distance between incisor ledge and the stomion when patient is smiling and then subtract the incisor display at rest. 
In this way, you can easily measure that how much lip has elevated from rest position to the maximum smile in this patient. Never miss the length and width ratio of upper incisors. The ratio between width and length of upper central incisors is around 75 to 85%. That means if the length of upper incisor is 10 mm, then the width should be around 8 mm. However, in lateral incisors, the percentage is around 65. That you should always measure because this can also be a reason for gummy smiles. Like in this patient, the width is more than the length of incisor. Now there are three reasons for that. Patient may have altered passive eruption. What is that? For that you will have to understand the stages of eruption. I am not going in details of the eruption theories. Generally, when the teeth start to erupt and move within the bone, we call it pre-emergence movement. Till this point, the tooth has not pierced the gums. Once it has emerged into oral cavity, one of the cusp is visible then it continues to erupt with a greater speed. We call it post-emergence movement till it comes in contact with the opposing tooth. But you can notice that initially the level of the gums or gingival margin is on the enamel. Gradually after eruption, the dentogingival junction moves from enamel to CEJ that is cementoenamel junction and we call it passive eruption. But sometimes this passive eruption is altered and instead of the gingival margin resting on the CEJ, it remains on the clinical crown and we call it altered passive eruption. Now look into this patient in whom the width of the incisor is more than the length of the central incisor. One of the reason of gummy smile in this patient is disturbed or altered passive eruption. One more reason can be the gingival hyperplasia. Like in this patient, because of the inflamed and hyperplastic gums, the length and width ratio of the incisors is disturbed and there will be gummy smile in this patient. But the reason is different. One more reason of disturbed width and length ratio of incisor is the extrusion of incisor after fracture or attrition of the incisal edge. How does it happen? For example, if the incisal edge is fractured, this tooth may erupt excessively. And whenever the tooth is moving, alveolar bone along with the gums move with the teeth. That happens usually. So you can find in this patient excessive visibility of gums on a particular tooth which has been fractured. Like here you can see there is severe attrition and the patient has developed gummy smile just because of the excessive eruption of these central incisors. One more thing that you should not miss is the angulation of upper incisors. Whenever teeth are retroclined, there will be excessive visibility of the gums. Like in this patient, you can see that upper right central incisor is excessively retroclined. And because of that, there is localized excessive visibility of gums on upper right central incisor in this patient. So here, the reason of gummy smile is the angulation. So never miss class 2 division 2. Always measure extra orally the vertical thirds in your patients because sometime the reason for gummy smile is not just dental, it can be due to excessive growth of maxilla in vertical plane. You should measure the upper third, middle third and lower third of the face. More or less these thirds are equal in lengths. But sometimes, if a patient is mouth breather or just genetically there is excessive growth of maxilla in vertical dimension, then there will be definitely gummy smile. Because the vertical growth of maxilla is excessive in this patient and lips were unable to accommodate. So what will be your findings in these kinds of cases? You will find increased lower facial height you will find increased interlabial gap that is the patient's lips will be incompetent at rest there will be excessive visibility of incisor when the patient is at rest of course he will have gummy smile 
but the reason here is excessive vertical maxillary growth we call it vertical maxillary excess vme like in this patient you can see that patient has a longer face longer lower facial height incompetent lips increased visibility of incisor and of course gummy smile so these are the diagnostic features of vmes now let me conclude with this table in which you can see on my left hand side seven major reasons for gummy smile and you can make a checklist in all of your patients that what kind of findings you have observed in your patients like if the patient has excessive vertical maxillary growth or vme the patient will have incompetent lips that is increased interlabial gap there will be increased visibility of incisors at rest and of course the patient has gummy smile and patient has longer lower facial height however the reason for gummy smile is just anterior dentoalveolar extrusion not the whole maxilla is growing excessively downward but the anterior dentoalveolar portion is overgrowing in vertical direction so the patient will definitely have incompetent lips excessive visibility of incisors at rest of course he will have gummy smile but the lower facial height will not be increased in that patient in my next presentation i will discuss a case or series of cases along with treatment of the patient with anterior dental alveolar extrusion if the patient has short upper lip there will be increased interlabial gap that means he will have incompetent lips visibility of incisor will be at excessive at rest the ratio between upper lip and the commissure length will be disturbed and he will be having gummy smile if the reason of the gummy smile is hypermobile lip he will not have incompetent lips because at rest the lip length is enough to cover the dentoalveolar segment therefore the visibility of incisor at rest will be normal length of upper lip will be normal but there is gummy smile and when you will measure the mobility of upper lip there will be excessive elevation of upper lip while patient is smiling if the reason is the altered passive eruption you will not find incompetence of the lip you will not find excessive visibility of incisor or any problem with the lip length but along with the gummy smile you will see the disturbed width and length ratio of the incisors the reason can be tooth wear and gingival hyperplasia in all these cases you will find gummy smile along with the disturbed width and length ratio of the incisors and of course when the reasons of the gummy smile are different then the treatment will also differ i hope that i have cleared the etiologies of gummy smile and how would you examine those patients stay tuned for upcoming cases in my next presentations related to the same topic gummy smile thank you